happening. Morning. What's happening? Yeah, it's a pretty uh, sorry tale for home base. Um, we've talked about it a lot because uh, it was bought by a big Australian firm in 2016. They then sold it off uh, for just a pound because they couldn't make it work. And it's now in the hands of a company known as Hilco Capital. They're a turnaround specialist. Um, and what they've said they want to do is go to the landlords and get a reduction in the rent because a lot of their stores aren't making money and they say they're having to pay too much for these big out of town warehouses and it's costing them too much. So what happens today is the big make or break meeting with those landlords, whether they're prepared to accept a cut in how much rent they get paid. Uh, it's something that we've seen across the high street as well. Some have been successful, some haven't. But these are out of town. I thought yeah. these, these rents were less penal than the, than the high street. But just think how big they are. They are absolutely huge warehouses on the edges of town. Some of them sort of still within the sort of suburbs, not right out on motorways right. and that sort of thing. So they still cost a lot to run and people frankly aren't going through the doors. Um, and so what they've said is we want to cut in rents and how much we pay you as a landlord. The landlords have said, whoa, hang on a minute. We're not prepared to see a cut of up to 50 or 60 percent in how much you pay us. So if they put their foot down today and so we're not prepared to accept a cut in rents, then we could see the chain go under. The bosses have said, look, it's at that level of the business that if they can't come to a deal today, the business could collapse. So a really important day uh, for home base. It's got 250 stores, 11,500 staff. Uh, so a really important day for all of those staff to find out what happens to their futures and crucially whether the business can keep going uh, and it will remain on those uh, industrial parks and on some high streets around the country. OK, Ben, we'll wait for the outcome of that deal. Thanks very much, Jess. At its height, it was the UK's biggest payday lender, but a clampdown on short-term lending really hurt the business and it led to a massive bill for compensation claims. Well, yesterday, all of that got too much for Wonga and it called in the administrator saying that it couldn't afford to pay its own bills anymore, never mind the massive claims that were mounting up. So what does it actually mean for people who want a bit of quick credit? Well, Sarah Jane Clifton is with me. She's from the Jubilee Debt Campaign Charity. Uh, Sarah Jane, nice to see you. Morning. Um, what do you make of this? You heard this news yesterday, and, and as I touched on there, there was a lot of criticism of companies, not just Wonga, but Wonga was sort of the most famous, wasn't it? What do you make of the collapse? Um, well, we understand why people are celebrating. Wonga's business model was fundamentally a predatory one. It was based on preying on pretty desperate people with vulnerable finances, uh, dishing out high-cost credit with little regard for people's ability to repay. Um, uh, but also, at the same time, there's still lots of other rip-off lenders out there. So there's lots of other payday loan companies. We see similar um, irresponsible rip-off practices, not just in payday loans, but in rent-to-own with companies like Bright House, doorstep lending, even on the high street with um, high street banks, uh, credit cards. Um, and Wonga's loans are going to get uh, bought up, sold off. Wonga's customers are going to have to be paying their debts. And the fundamental situation, the fundamental problem, is that our economy is being kept afloat um, by credit. There's too many people who just aren't earning enough money to, to make ends meet, and it's the poorest people who are paying the highest price for that. Um, but you would say there is a problem somewhere in the system that these firms <laughs> exist in the first place. Um, and we've heard from a lot of people over the last 24 hours that really did rely on firms like Wonga to get them through. Maybe it was a a water bill here, an electricity bill there, and without a firm like Wonga, they would have faced being locked out of their house or lost, you know, their electricity or water. They were pretty valuable for the people that needed them. Sure, that's true. Um, the, the, the the problem is that there aren't any affordable alternative credit um, uh, options out there and the government doesn't really have a strategy for providing them. So some people live in areas where there's a credit union or a social enterprise, but with the slashing of the community care grants, which were the emer emergency grants that supported people in those situations, now the only choice that people have is to go to um, high-cost short-term lenders like Wonga or the others which, which will continue to exist now. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask, actually. I mean, for, you know, for, for people in that position, if they've got a poor credit rating, uh, they might just need 50 quid to tie them over to the next payday. Where do they go? Where can they get that money? That's the, that's the problem. There isn't there isn't really a strategy from the government about how to address that at the moment. There's some quite exciting initiatives. So the actor Michael Sheen uh, has launched something called the End High Cost Credit Alliance, um, which is about trying to expand affordable credit. But not just uh, the problem is not just uh, the lack of alternatives, but the fact that there is this other exploitative credit out there. We really want to see the regulator, the Financial Conduct Authority, use the uh, the power it has and actually fulfil its duty to protect households and put the cap which currently exists on payday loans across all forms of high cost credit to try and stop this, this rip off lending and the predatory practices. Um, really quickly, if someone has a loan from Wonga, <clears throat> what do they need to do right now? 
they um, continue as usual, they have to keep paying it, the loans are going to be sold on. Um, but we'd also really advise people that if people have any debt problems at all to seek help as soon as they can, go to the Step Change Charity or the National Debt Line or the Local Citizens Advice Bureau. Okay, uh, good advice. Thanks very much. Uh, Sarah Jane Clifton there from the Jubilee Debt Campaign Charity. Thanks for explaining all of that. Yeah, really interesting story, isn't it, Naga Steph? Um, you know, two sides to every coin. And clearly in this case, a lot of people relied on it. But of course, as you heard there, that criticism as well of those really yeah. astronomical interest rates. And such an impact on people as well. And yeah. thank you very much. Past seven is the time. Lots of news coming through um, in the world of business, Ben. Um, concerns about collapse and some sales as well. Yes, uh, we're going to start with this one, the biggie, uh, home base. Uh, and it's sort of another chapter in its very troubled history. Uh, today really is make or break day as far as uh, its future is concerned because it's got a crunch meeting with landlords of some of those big stores. What home base wants to do is come to a deal with them to cut how much it pays in rent by as much as 50 or 60 percent. Uh, and I think it's pretty uh, substantial, but those landlords say, well, frankly, we're not happy. Uh, but as far as home base is concerned, it says, well, if you don't agree to cut our rent, then the business in its entirety could go bust. So that's one thing that they're dealing with today. So there's an issue for them uh, later, and it will affect, what, 11,500 staff, 250 stores that home base has. Uh, and it's uh, sort of another chapter in that difficulty for retail right now. We know other retailers facing what's called company voluntary arrangements, coming to a deal to try and cut how much it pays. Because a staggering statistic is that 70% of home base outlets at the moment do not make money. Um, so it wants to shut a number of them with huge detrimental effect on uh, the staff who work there. So we're waiting for that decision, but we've had some news um, otherwise just literally come through in yeah, the last few minutes. Yeah, literally just come in. So um, I'm sort of looking at this um, at the same time. But um, this is a really surprising one. Costa, the coffee chain, uh, selling itself to Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola will pay £3.9 billion for it. Uh, Costa Coffee, uh, that's currently owned, as you may know, by Whitbread, the big pub yeah. chain, the big uh, brewing giant. Uh, it says that the uh, transaction has been agreed by Whitbread's board. They say that it's in the best interest of shareholders. So, hold uh, on, Costa is selling itself, so it's not Whitbread that decides to Yeah, remember to get that they it. split the two companies up pretty recently. So, Whitbread, which runs a number of pub chains, yeah. it also owns uh, a number of... Exactly, well. yes, yeah, sort of uh, the uh, travel business. Um, it separated Costa into a separate organisation. At the time, they said that that was because it, it was such a different business to the rest of it that it would do better to have its own board, its own management and its own strategy not being part of a bigger organisation. Well, all starts to look a bit suspiciously familiar when you get, you know, a couple of months down the line, they say, well, actually, the reason probably we've done that is to sell ourselves to Coca-Cola. So, yeah, uh, you see it there on the screen. Coca-Cola is going to buy Costa for uh, what is valued at a deal of £3.9 billion. Uh, the boss of Whitbread says, great news for shareholders, and it really does recognise the value that we've created in the Whitbread brand. Be interesting to see what they do with it. Yes. Mm. I mean, they, what they're trying to get hold of, of course, is that network. I mean, hundreds of stores up and down the country, especially in really lucrative locations like uh, um, motorway service stations, all that sort of thing. Really good network. And then you might see that the two come together. So yeah. get a coffee and a Coke. No. <laughs> That's a caffeine hit. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thanks very much. Do we, Ben? Because we've got Ben. Oh. No, because we've got sunshine over the weekend. <laughs> well, what I that, I'm absolutely boiling with all these lights. In the uh, there is a reason that they're all here, and I'm going to explain what's happening this weekend. Is this part of your ride? Now, when you come on <laughs> yeah. set, you have to be perfectly, perfectly lit. lit. I do not travel anywhere without my lighting crew. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, you may have noticed we've got a few props in here. We're explaining what changes this weekend because there are big changes on the way, um, all part of an EU directive to make us use more energy efficient bulbs. Now, you might remember a few years ago they banned those sort of incandescent filament bulbs they went out so the next thing that's in line for being banned is halogen bulbs um, they are the sort that have a tiny little bulb inside you'll notice there and the reason that they're um, going to be banned is because they're pretty energy inefficient they cost quite a lot over the year to run about eight pounds 42 so what the EU said is nope they're out Okay. Um, and so retailers, they'll be able to sell their existing stock, but they won't be able to get new ones. So if you really love those, get down the shops now because they're going to run out at some point. Um, so those are the things that are going out of the way, these ones with a little sort of filament thing and a little halogen bit inside. So that's the thing that is disappearing. 
But what they're going to be replaced with are LED bulbs. Um, those are the sort, they, they come in at different varieties. Um, and the reason that they're coming in is because they're much more energy efficient. So they might be these sort of spotlight ones. And you'll notice the difference in price, less than two pounds a year to run. And that means they're more, much more energy efficient. Uh, and so the EU is saying, well, these are the ones that we should be using. Now they come in sort of this Does that form. include the price of the actual bulb? No, and they do cost much more. Uh, mm. but they last much, much longer. So they okay. might come in that form, which is sort of a spotlight, uh, the sort of thing that you put in your sort of ceiling lights, or they come in that sort of format. Um, and the cost maybe, uh, well, about £25 to buy, but they cost just under £2 a year to run. So in the longer term, they will work out much cheaper. Isn't one of the complaints about those, though, that they, they're not as bright? Yes, um, okay. technology is much better. Okay. That means that this sort are getting better. They'll light up quicker and they'll be just as bright. But a lot of people don't like the fact that they're sort of cloudy and, and frosted. Mm. And so what they've come up with is this one. And this is what they call an LED filament bulb. It looks like a much more traditional bulb, but it is still energy efficient and it still costs less than two pounds a year to run. So they've tried to replicate those old style ones uh, and they are much more energy efficient and they look just like the old ones. Um, but there's also these two, and these are the more traditional energy saving bulbs. These are the sort of things that many people don't like. Um, they're what's called compact fluorescence. So they look like that or like that. Um, and again, they're much cheaper to run, but a lot of people don't like that sort of bluey, greeny light that they give out, and they do take a bit longer to warm up. So those are the options that are available. You've either got the compact fluorescence or the LEDs. So there is choice out there. Those are much more expensive, as you pointed out, but they do last longer and they're cheaper to run. So over the life of that bulb, it should save you a bit of money. I never knew so much about that. I know. And now I know loads. <laughs> I'm boiling in here, are you? <laughs> no, I quite like it. I quite like it when it's Don't waft it out, will we? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Coca-Cola, the big American giant, is buying up the British success story that is Costa Coffee. Coffee, coffee and cola, eh? Yes, yeah, CCCC, Costa Coffee, Coca-Cola. Uh, it's an ideal match, um, apparently, according to the two bosses of both firms. We've heard from Whitbread this morning that said, look, they've built up this international brand. Uh, they've been uh, setting up uh, a lot of stores overseas, a lot of those uh, convenience machines that you get now in things like... Um, service stations uh, and so they say they've had a good offer and an offer that was too good to refuse and that offer came from coca-cola and it was worth 3.9 billion pounds um it's interesting if you look at the makeup of costa now by far the biggest uh, coffee chain in the uk owned by whitbread 2400 stores in the uk nearly 1400 stores around the world uh, and 8,000 of those costa express machines so um they said well, it's a fair price coca-cola wants to get its hands on it we've just had a statement from from the boss of Coca-Cola in the US saying that, well, this is the market that they want to get into. It lets them get into the hot beverage market that they don't currently operate in. And this is an ideal way for them to do that. Uh, and just a little fact for you, uh, Whitbread bought Costa back in 1995. So that's what, 23 years ago. They paid 19 million pounds for it. Then it just had 39 stores. So spin forward 23 years. How much has so that spent? 19 million. Right. And they've now sold it for 3.9 billion. Quite a nice little payday, but as we've said, you know, they've expanded a lot. They've now got like 2,400 stores in the UK, 1,300 uh, internationally. So up from that 39, that small business they bought back in 1995. Uh, and thank you to everyone who sent me messages this morning saying how much you hate the word beverage as well. Not a fan of that word either. Hate the word beverage? Beverage is such a rubbish word, don't you think? Oh, there are other there are, there are, I've never thought market. about it. There of all the things, things hate. people could have got annoyed yeah. about this morning, I didn't think it would be <laughs> beverage. <laughs> Yeah, it's on my list of words I don't like. Yeah, really? that, that's the statement. Yeah. Oh, what else is on the list? No, no, no. We haven't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Well